Girl Tiffany D, and you're watching Sip and Dish. Welcome to the third and final part of my interview with Dawn Robinson. Make sure you subscribe to check out parts one and two. Yes, it was for me because I'm looking around. Like I said, our producer's got this big, huge mansion that he's bragging about so much. And even though it was only eight million in his mind, in my mind, it was like only eight million. <laughs> Did you say eight? You know what I mean? It was that. It was wow. that. So, no, dude, you you talking to the wrong girl. So I my eyes started opening slowly but surely, and I was like, I started asking questions to our um, our uh. I remember going to get all of my paperwork from our accountant because I said something is wrong and I don't know where it's at. So I want all my paperwork and I want to look through this. And get an attorney to look it over and just tell me what's wrong here. Right. And I got Donald Passman. That's when I got Donald Passman to come in. And he was like, oh, <laughs> you guys have a dinosaur, what they call a dinosaur deal. They don't even sign deals for new artists like this anymore. You ladies are like, I'm sorry to say, but you're not making a whole lot of money. You're only getting two pennies a record. And you should have renegotiated a long time ago. Wow. Long time ago. Yeah. So now we're at the point where communication breaks down. Mm -hmm. I know there was a point where you were saying you wanted to do some solo projects, but still stay in the group. But then there was another member who was doing solo, solo projects and wanted to stay in the group. But then there was a problem that you were the one that wanted. So that it was kind of like this, everybody turned on Dawn thing. Exactly. That yeah. Happened when you yep. were the only one in the group who wanted to do some solo things right i wasn't but this is the thing i didn't want to do solo stuff so we had all four of us agreed after funk uh, so born to sing funky divas runaway love which was just an ep but it had a new song on there um so i consider that a freaking album um and it was a remix to all the other songs all the other hits that we had so free your mind never gonna get it giving them something to feel hold on um, it was a remix to all those songs because we hadn't done Don't Let Go yet. Um, and then, so that, that, so that's three albums. And then here we are getting ready to go in and do our fourth album under the same terms as the first three. Yeah. What is the problem here? Like, where's the freaking money? Right. We four agreed, Cindy, Terry, Maxine, and myself all agreed that we're not going to go in the studio and sing another note, not anything, until our producers and our record label renegotiate our terms. Right. It's about fucking time. It's been eight years. Exactly. And like I said, uh, four albums in, we're getting ready to do this fourth album. So it's about time for us to um, renegotiate. Yeah. So we all agreed that we're not going in. We're going to stand down. We're going to, you know, hold our own and we're going to stand in solidarity with each other, arm in arm. And we're not going in the studio. We're not going to sing a thing. Right. Next thing we know, we get a call that Terry's in the studio. And I forgot how we found that out. I forgot, I guess Cindy and Terry had talked, or, or our manager maybe told us, which Terry's in the studio, what? We agreed that we weren't going in and this bitch is in the studio. I say bitch in a funny way, not right, a right. name, nasty. What are you doing? We called her. Why are you at the studio with Denny and Tommy, our producers? Oh, well, now, I digress a little bit. Terry was dating Denny, our producer. That was the biggest downfall of the group because that meant that her, what do you call it when someone is so enamored with another person, oh. her, her loyalty, yeah. her, um, her uh, audience and her. Exactly. All of that was with him. Yeah. Exactly. She didn't have that with us, although we were the ones to do this together. You should be paying homage to your group. That's who you should be loyal to. 
Instead, she was loyal to our producer. So she's over there with him. Oh. We're over here and we're like, what are you doing? Why are you in the studio? Oh, well, I don't agree with you guys. You know, I, me and Denny got our thing too. And I just don't agree with what you guys want to do. So you guys go ahead and make decisions without me. I, I don't want to be there. I don't want to. And I'm like, we can't make decisions without you, Terry, because we can't, the label is not going to listen to us. We signed as four girls. Right. We signed a major label deal as four women. We can't do this without you. Um, well, I don't know what to tell you guys, but I'm going to be doing my thing. And so she went on to record her solo album. In the meantime, seven months, um, well, yeah, it was about seven months, uh, me and Maxine and Cindy were trying to decide what we wanted to do. And Cindy didn't want to go against Terry. I didn't want to go against her either. I just wanted to make sure that we got what we deserved. Exactly. So let's try to talk to the label and see what, what, what's possible. Because right now, we have to pay bills too. Right. You know what I mean? Ter yeah, Terry's over there doing her thing, but we have bills to pay. So what are we going to do? Just sit around? I'm going to lose my house because I can't pay my mortgage? So Terry put out her first single, then she was rehearsing for her tour, then she actually did a show at the Pantages in Los Angeles. Me, Cindy, and Maxine went to her show, supported her, um, and then the label put her on the road. So this is seven months later. Yeah, they got behind her. We were even behind her. Right, right. We were even oh, supportive of Terry. Um, and then the next thing I know, the label was calling me and saying, Dawn, do you want to put out a solo album too? We, you know, we're willing to get behind you. So I was like, heck yeah. Because in a minute, I'm getting ready to lose my house, you know, because I can't pay my mortgage. And it's, it's been seven months with Terry. So um, it was, now I know it was in hindsight, it was divide and conquer. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. Exactly. Um, we're going to, so I was three songs in when they came to me and said, okay, Dawn, uh, we love your stuff. Uh, they loved, hold on, I'm sorry, uh, Healing, a song that I did called Healing. We love your songs, um, song, because they only heard the one, but uh, we're going to pull your, your album right now, and we're going to just put, to, put that on hold, and we're going to go ahead and do an En Vogue album. And I was like, nope, no, you won't. I said, you're going to do the En Vogue album, and I'll stay in En Vogue, but I want my, my solo rights, I want them revoked. You're going to let me go as a solo artist, because you didn't take me seriously like you did Terry, and I resent that. I resent that. That's the real deal. Yeah, I resented that. So, um, because I think the story out really that you know before you got this opportunity to really come in and set things straight was that you mm -hmm. were the group. You just wanted to, of be course, and do your own thing and exactly, yeah. You wanted the spotlight, and it was like at the group. Yep. But really, you know, somebody else was doing their own thing, and you waited a couple of months. Exactly. I waited a, a lot of months. We all did. They came to you with Yes. This. Yes. Cindy, Cindy was okay financially because her husband was playing for Cincinnati Red. So he was a major baseball player in the major leagues, I should say. Um, so she had a little more of a cushion and she could wait it out and kind of yeah. wait for things. And, and she was riding the fence. And I was like, Cindy, Maxine, we got to do something here. Yeah. I'm not going to be waiting for Terry. Like, what, what is that about? You know? Really what we should have done in hindsight, I think we should have gone to the label and said, Cindy, Terry has breached her contract with us. She breached her contract as an artist, as a, uh, a label mate or a, a group a mate. Group mate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sisterhood. And, and we're not cool with that. And we don't have a way to pay our bills either right now. So what are we supposed to do? So um, we have a contract with you guys to put out, I think it was seven albums. And right now we've only done four. So what are we going to do with this fourth album? Like we need money right now. And when the label came to me, what I regret to this day, Tiffany, is that I did not tell Cindy and Terry, Cindy and Maxine, that I was doing my solo album. And they called me. I was at a game. My, my nephew was doing a baseball game, uh, playing baseball that day. And I did not tell Cindy and Maxine that I was doing this album. So they called me on it. Hey, Dawn, this is Cindy. Hey, Sin, what's up? Yeah, I have Maxine too. Hey, Max, hey. Yeah, hey Dawn. Um, so we heard that you're doing a solo album. Oh. Um, yeah, I yeah, yeah, I felt bad. I felt really bad. I was caught. I was basically caught. But I should have told them day one. This is what the label is offering me, and they probably could have talked me out of it. Like Dawn, that's divide and conquer. Right. They're trying some bullshit with you because Terry's out there. They want to keep you out there and keep me and Cindy waiting, just like right. we, you, me, and Cindy were waiting for Terry. Same thing. And I, and I didn't see it. I was like, I got to pay my bills. And that's what I saw. 
Um, and so I regret that to this day and I take full accountability for that. Um, so basically I went in and I started, like I said, and they pulled me out three songs into the album. And, uh, so they let me go as a solo artist, but I went on to record that whole EV, what became EV3 album with the girls. Right. So I regret that because I did that whole album and they, they took my vote. They took my vocals and pulled them back in the cut. They were supposed to take them off altogether. But they just pulled it in the mix. They didn't take nothing off. I hear myself loud and clear. A lot of people right. can hear me on that album. Yes. Yeah. Right Direction, um, Too Gone Too Long, Whatever. Of course, um, Don't Let Go is still on there. And I sang lead on that. Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I sang lead on our biggest hit, Tiffany. Like, yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. I remember there was a music video that had your vocals, but you weren't in the video. What song was really? That? You were in a you were on the vocals, but you weren't in the music video. Oh, it was probably too gone too long. Yeah, and I was like, I can hear myself on there really well, and I can hear myself on. Oh, right direction! Oh my gosh, just so many great songs on that album, um, and. They said that when, when I left the group, like you said, the rumor was that I was just wanting to be solo. I was a diva. I was a, if a diva, if someone wants to be a diva in a case where a woman wants to leave and just go solo, you're going to go solo. You're not going to go to another group. I went to Lucy Pearl, bitches. Right. <laughs> I went to Lucy Pearl. You probably would have been better off just staying solo because then Lucy Pearl was, but you were about to sign. Uh, you were about to sign. You got with Lucy Pearl. Yes, I was going to sign a solo deal with RCA at the time. And then when I found out that Raphael was looking for me, because I've known Raphael since we were kids. We were both 16 years old when he played in my band. So I was like, oh my God, I don't have to be alone out here. Oh my God. You know, because you're talking about. It's like a comfort. Yes, exactly. Like if I would have just gone solo first, I would have never felt what it's like to be in a group. So I loved Cindy, Maxine, Terry. Those are my sisters. Right. And I felt alone when I was by myself. I was like, I do not, I was just out of body that day. When they kicked me out of the group, it was like, whoa. And that's, the, so going back to In Vogue just a little bit, um, we were supposed to have, after this, uh, um, Cindy, Sylvia was pissed off because I slighted her. I outsmarted her when it was come. So you're not going to do my solo album, so you're going to let me go as a solo artist, but I'll stay in the group as In Vogue. Right. One of the In Vogue members, I'll stay with the group. And I went on to, to do that album with them. Like I said, I, I recorded the whole thing. And then after, um, just before we were almost done with that album, we had two more songs to go. Sylvia comes to town. So she lives in New York. That's where Atlantic Records is in New York. She comes to town um, to meet with us for what she called a creative meeting. It was supposed to be our, so the four of us, our managers, Sylvia Roan and her, I think her A&R guy, Marilyn Bob, because he was always with her. Anytime we did a video and filmed in LA, he was always there. So I think it was Marilyn Bob. So it's eight people. And then our managers were supposed to be there, two people. And then why, when I walked in the door, were our attorneys there? Oh. Why were our attorneys? Yeah, because this is supposed to be a creative meeting. So why are you guys here? Why? Um, and I couldn't ask that question when I walked in the room. I literally had to, I was late for the meeting and I'm always late. Always, chronically, Dawn is late. She's like, this is her funeral though. But yes, she's late though. Yeah, she's late. That's, that's me. me, right? Yeah, that's <laughs> it's me. terrible, Tiffany. Oh, All the time. It. So, you late, so when you came in, it was like a, it was like a. Yes, I was, I was ambushed. Oh, no. Yeah. Because when I came in the room, they were already talking. Of course, I'm like, hey, guys, hi, everybody. Sylvia Rome was talking. She's like, hi, Dawn. Um, and I just sat, literally, I had to sit. They put a chair where I walked in the door and I had to sit right here. I walked in and I had to sit down, okay? I couldn't go sit over there because they wanted me right here for a reason. It was strategic. I see it now. Maxine was sitting to my right, but she was on the floor. And I could have sat. There were other little places I could have sat, but... So basically, there was a couch right across from me. Sylvia was sitting right in the middle. Cindy was sitting to her right. So when I'm looking at them, Cindy is to my right. Sylvia's left to my right. And then Terry's sitting on the end of the couch. But she's facing 
so she's sitting like this on the couch oh, basically but not even yes at you. she's not even looking at me which is the way she would have had to look like that um so she i would have been facing her i was facing cindy i was facing sylvia roan and i was facing one of our managers and then someone else was sitting there and all the way over um on chairs so but everybody on the couch was facing us me and maxine and so Sylvia's like, started, she started out by saying, so Dawn, I was telling the girls before you walked in uh, that we can't have any hidden agendas for this album. And I was like, okay. And she said, because um, we're really putting a lot into this album and we want everybody to be on the same page. Okay. <clears throat> she said, but you have a solo album. I said, yes, I, I haven't started it yet. Um, yeah, but you have a solo deal. I do, but I haven't started my solo album yet. Now, this is with someone else, not with her. Because the one that I did with her, remember, she pulled that album. Exactly. Yeah. So I never got to finish it. So I said, yeah, I do have a solo deal on the table, but I haven't started recording. I'm in the studio every day with In Vogue. I'm, we're almost done with this album. I've been at the studio every day with Cindy, Terry, and Maxine. My, and she kept saying, well, you have a hidden, you have a, a, your album is your priority. I said, it's not, Sylvia. It's not. Like, we got into this whole back and forth, and I'm like, but no. I'm at the studio with the girls every day. My priority is in vogue, and it has been. The girls can't tell you that Dawn has been late or Dawn has not been at the studio or she, she took a week off or a few days off or she's there every other day. I'm there every single day. Right. I've recorded this whole album with them, so what are you talking about? My solo album has nothing to do with in vogue, nothing. It hasn't um, hindered or... Uh, what do you call it? Gotten in the way of us yeah. recording that EV3, what became EV3 album. So, what is the problem here? Well, we're putting a lot of money into this album right now, and um, we're going to put millions of dollars behind in a campaign behind In Vogue. And I'm like, okay. I said, so basically, what you're telling me is you're all of a sudden you're getting behind us? Like, it's been eight years that we've been signed to you, Sylvia. What are you saying? I said, well, I'm saying that it's been eight years. Like, where were you last year? Right. Seven years ago, six years ago, five years ago. Why weren't you behind us from day one? And I'm going back and forth with her. And she's like, well, we're, you know, we need to know what you're doing. And, you're, what you're, and I said, well, I said, I don't understand. And, I, and this is when I looked at Terry. Like I said, she's sitting on the couch, but she's facing this way. No. So she, I'm basically looking at the side of her face. I don't get it. <clears throat> um, and she, and I said, so Terry, I said, Terry did a solo album, Sylvia. Right. And she said, yes. I said, so what's different about Terry's solo album? Because she did hers first. Right. You asked Terry to do a solo album first, but what's different about her solo album? Why is that different? And Terry turned to me and said, it's just different, Dawn. It just is. It's just different. Like as if to say, when you, you ask your mom if you can go somewhere or go hang out with your friends, and she says, no, you can't go. And why? Because I said so. Oh, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. It was that, and it was that cold. And I was like, wow, it's just different. Okay, wow. And Sylvia said again, so we need to know if you're going to stay in this group or not. And, I, and she was putting on her coat because she had to go back, uh, fly back to New York that night. And I said, so if you're asking me if I'm out of the group, uh, yeah, I'm out. And she's like, well, we're going to give you, you know, 24 hours or something like that to think about it. And I, I, I just said that I'm out. But I guess she wanted to give me time because she's like, did she just say that she's out of the group? Right. Like Did I, she just I, tell I, me that she's I, out? <laughs> she couldn't believe it. Yeah. So I was like, okay. Um, the next day, now getting on the elevator, we, we rode down the elevator. Sylvia stayed back, I think, for a second. One of the managers came downstairs with us. Both of the attorneys came. No, no. Both of the attorneys stayed. One of the managers came down with us, and then um, Maxine was on the elevator with us because she's with me. Cindy was on the elevator as well, and and Maxine said, "Dawn, are you now?" All this time, I'm on the elevator, but I'm out of body, and I'm looking at the floor like, "Oh my God, my life is over. The group that I was in is over. Like my, oh my God, I can't breathe." I'm looking at the floor, and I can hear the ding, ding, ding of the uh, elevator as we got went down every floor with ding. Ding, Woo. ding, like four, you know, four, four, three, two. And Maxine said, Dawn, are you coming to the studio? And I'm not hearing her. One, ding. And Maxine said, Dawn. And I said, Max, what? And she said, are you coming to the studio? And I said, yes, yes, I, yeah. I don't know. At this point, I don't know. 
Right. You, you guys are basically telling me that I'm out of this group. And this is over for me. And I just told you guys that I'm out too because I felt slighted. That's why I told her, fuck you, basically. If you're asking me if I'm out of this group right now, yes, I'm out. Right. Because you're not Cause giving you guys me a choice. You're not giving me, no, it, this is what I've always said. It was like a, it was like a, um, to me, when you give somebody a choice, it's like you're trying to work it out. So what can you do? Can right. you give us this much time? When are you going to start your solo album? Okay, so we're going to record this album. We'll put, can you wait to put your solo album out after this next EV4 album? Can you wait for that? You know, that's a compromise. Exactly. But with them, it was, a, it was an ultimatum. Our way or the fucking highway, bitch, you're out. And I was like, wow. So if you're, okay, I'm out then. Right. Wow. That's what it was. And yeah, it's, it's such a, I can feel it as if right now I'm out of body, but I'm in that moment in the elevator and I can feel that whole thing. And it was like, whoa, uh, I felt uh, not sick, but almost dizzy a little bit. Like it was like, a is this for moment. real? Yeah. It was a surreal moment for you. It was very surreal. There you go. Yeah. It just came crashing into your mind. Exactly. What am I going to do now? Oh my God, that really just happened. Like, yeah. Well, my mother said later on, she said, it's like, it's like you really went through a breakup. Yeah. What does that feel like? You feel empty. You feel lost. You feel left behind. You feel in, in some cases, unless it was you that wanted to break up. But in my case with my ex-husband, I felt like I wasn't ready for our relationship to end. I wanted him to work on it. Um, he was cheating on me the whole time. Like the whole, he was a chronic cheater, like really bad. Um, and so I just felt like you, you never gave our marriage a chance. You never gave it a chance. Like, come on, that's not fair to me. So that's what I felt like, like you guys are just like, like pushing me out, but you're keeping Terry for doing the same thing. Terry did a solo album, same as me. Why with the same label, that? our label, Atlantic Records with Sylvia Roan. And you guys are keeping her and you're kicking me the fuck out. Like what right now? Oh my God. And. I called Maxine the next day and she was like, Dawn, you know, we already made up our minds. We know that you're out of the group, blah, blah, blah. I was like, wow. Maxine talks at the end of her breath all the time. She talks like this. So she's always holding her breath, kind of like that. And she's from New Jersey. So she's always got this little Dawn, you know, <laughs> little accent, New Jersey accent. Um, we're both from the East Coast. Yeah. So I have her down. Um, oh, and I've got Cindy too. Cindy talks out of her nose and she's very nasal. Hi, Dawn. This is Cindy. Um, but anyway, yeah, Maxine was like, no, we know that you're out. And I was like, Max, but I'm, I'm not, I mean, I'm trying to, and she's like, no, we're good. She was and just so real cold. Wow. Cut me off. Was that? that was it. Eight years, yeah. eight years, all of these. Exactly. Years. Done. I helped build this shit with you guys and you're just kicking me out. Like I had nothing to do with it. And now, you know, I, now I could really understand why to, it's so important for you to discuss this because. It is such a hurtful thing. It's a hurtful it thing. Is. You feel like you have a sisterhood with, with people. And then at the end of everything yep. that happens, you're still made out to be the villain. You can't use the mm -hmm. Vogue anymore. Woo! You get into <laughs> another thing with, with Lucy Pearl, with somebody you trusted since you were kids. And then that exactly. ends up being, you lose your house from that. And you know, everybody but, knows that story as well. Exactly. Like, yeah. It's like when this is the thing, Tiffy. This is what I learned from both of those. Even as you just said that, all that and putting it together. I wasn't supposed to be in another group. I kept trying to go to different groups and do different stuff. Even with the reality show being on another show with a bunch of women. Yeah. I wasn't supposed to do that. God had all these things for me. I started as a solo artist when I wanted as a kid. And then I got into En Vogue. And that was my introduction to the world, so to speak. And then here it is again. Okay, you're supposed to be solo, but you want to do another group. Okay, I'll let you do that. That's what God was telling me. The lesson. <clears throat> and yeah. exactly. And, and it's really hard. You don't see it at first. Sometimes even your mate, even your boyfriend or husband can be jealous of you. My ex-husband was jealous of me because he was in the music business, but I have a bigger name. Well, dude, you knew when you married me who the fuck I was. Excuse me. Excuse exactly. my French, but you knew that. Support so, me. Thank you. What am I supposed to dummy down and act like I never did in Vogue and I never did Lucy Pearl? Like you knew that. So, but he was always trying to shine like I shine. And, he, and some people can't accept your light. Mm -hmm. you're, you're, too, you're too much for them. And so they're just like, oh my God, I can't handle 
the fact that she's loved by so many people. Well, I have fans. Hello. I yeah, didn't understand it. Um, that should make you proud. You know, it should what? make you proud. I'm glad that you came out on the other side. Of Thank you, Phoenix. And that now you're, I don't want to say sort of like rebuilding, but now you're mm -hmm. in a space where it's about dawn. Yes, yes, thank God. Caroline, you, you're writing in the middle of writing this book. I can't wait yeah. for this book to come out because I really <laughs> think that you're taking your time with it and it's going to be extremely mm -hmm. detailed. So thank you. It is a compilation of all your interviews, like in yes. a week. So everybody yes! has all the information <laughs> exactly how it happened. Do you mm -hmm. know like when, I know you're in the process of writing that book, but do you have like an idea of when you're, you're going to be finished, when it's going to be out? I wanted it out in first quarter. Um, I, I, actually, I had a date of uh, Valentine's Day because I'm like, it's a love, it's, day, it's a day about love. And I'm finding some new things out about Valentine's Day. Actually, yesterday, it was kind of dark. And yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, it's a pagan holiday. Like, it's dark. I didn't realize that. It started out being something, and because they didn't want to scare people, they changed it to Valentine's Day, but it's a dark day. I'm like, what the hell? So you got to make Valentine's Day, whatever day you meet your boyfriend and husband, girlfriend, whatever, is that's your Valentine's Day, right? So so um, my team is like, no, Dawn, we're going to just say spring. So first quarter, spring. So I would say April, May, April. Nice. I can't wait. Something like that. Yeah, me too. Me too, Thank Tiffany. I, um, names too. So when you when the book comes out and I read the book, we got to mm -hmm. do round two. I would love to love the book because I really yes. feel like you know going going forward in your career, mm -hmm. you can't you can't ever deny in vogue because um that's part I would of never your life lessons your journey. But now Absolutely. it's like it's dawn's time. You yes, know, I see you do some more acting. You know, I want to yes. books keep coming. I want to see this podcast pop off. I just exactly. Like, oh, oh. I want to hear your voice again. I hope that you come out. Oh. Oh, my yes, God. yes, Are yes. Music? Are we going to finally get this solo dawn? Well, I do have a solo album out, but it was on a bad label. And the label, it's, a, it's almost like all these lessons that I had to learn in life. It's so crazy because it looks like, okay, dawn, all these things happen. It's all every Everybody else's fault. It really was though. Like with Q Records, you can even read about Q Records, QVC Home Shopping Club had a label. They wanted to start a music label and they started Q Records. And Alan Rubens was the CEO who signed me directly for Q at Q Records. And <clears throat> excuse me, and he ended up embezzling money from Q Records. So it fell apart right when I was like, oh my God. Like, oh really? Lord. Yes. So, um, we got to put out music independently, Dawn. This is what I need you to do, okay? That's right. Yes. We are in the age of social media. I need you to just Well, that was back then. You know, this was uh, 2002. So, yeah, yeah, it was nothing. Yeah. But now, so now yeah. we're in the age where yes. we're it. We're in the age where you can literally write a song. Yes. Buy put it out tomorrow. And put it out tomorrow. And you exactly. can record it in your house. Thank you. Well, whole album. you still need, you still need uh, producers. You need yeah. music and all that stuff. But yes, I can. Absolutely can. Oh, yeah. you know, a lot of, um, cause I know Pharrell was talking a lot about, uh, you know, the labels as well and, wow. and stuff that they pulled with him too. him and Justin Timberlake. He was just talking about that on a podcast. And, um, wow. so these so a lot of people are moving away from these labels and sort of doing their independent getting independent producers and setting mm. up little makeshift studios in their house and exactly to, yeah and then just like sending it to get mix and mastered real quick and then it's out two days later after you you exactly i think yeah because you you don't need the majors you don't need and, and if you want your record to be in the stores you do need them to distribute it um right. but you don't need the majors to put it out there's like Nope. All these different, I'm learning about TuneCore, I'm learning about Orchard, uh, I think it's Orchard.com is a label, TowerRecords.com, uh, because they used to have Tower Records stores, now they have TowerRecords.com. Yep. Um, there's so many different venues online that you can put your music out, YouTube directly. Exactly, they're streaming, and you get streaming. streams. Yes! Also, because a lot of like CDs aren't even really a thing anymore. Now, I have all my CDs, because I'm just... You know, me like, too. I need to keep all me my too. and all my CDs. 
I have wax. Okay, I have wax and Woo! CDs. I got old school. Yes, yes. Hey, totally. Yes, I do. Yeah. So I mean, but you're you, absolutely right, though. Go ahead. You're in a position now where I feel like you could really um take advantage of social media and the streams and the interviews that you're doing and yes, come full force. Stomp exactly. Next on. I am our next. Yes, no, exactly. I am Tiffany. I really promise you that because now I have a team around me too. It's kind of like I had to, it's almost, I, I keep saying this too, because I give a different analogy, analogy each time, but it's like you have to fall apart and everything falls away from you. And the people that you thought were supposed to be here are gone. Mm -hmm. You are completely, God took it, he stripped everybody away. Yep. And I even tried to work with Maxine uh, earlier last year, and it just didn't work out. It did not work out. No. It didn't work. Who's that? Daughter. <laughs> How are you, little one? Hush, hush. Mommy's working. Uh, yes. <laughs> okay, that's all right. You know, she has been waiting. She, we've been on this for two hours now. What time is it? Oh my gosh! Really? Yeah, it's about yeah. An hour and a half, yeah. right? I mean, you know, because you're just such a great. Uh, uh, no, I don't mind. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. But thank you. No, yeah. I was just saying she's fine. She's been waiting for you this whole time, so she's been good. Yes. Really good. Yeah. Um, I so really to get out the journey and really, um, like, get out the the positivity of the impact that you've made. You know, I really want people wow. to understand that. And if they don't take away any interview, you know, we have the knowledge of how things really went down, but also to know that you're a heavy hitter and you contribute wow. to that with the songwriting. <laughs> That's important. Oh but my God, like Tiffany. Songwriting and, and- I've never been called a heavy hitter. That's amazing. Fun. Wow, thank you. Seriously, I like that. Come on. I, I do. When I start I recording, I'm going to tell you something when I start recording. Uh, okay. I, oh, I, my I, God. But Thank you. You're, you're a heavy hitter for sure. And I just want to, you know, people wow. to, to recognize that about you, that you have really contributed um, to this music industry. And for people like me, even though I'm, I don't sing, but I am in the entertainment industry in my genre. Sure you are. I'm, I'm a black woman. Yes. And without an in vogue, without a Dawn Robinson, there would be no Tiffany and there would be no subsequent groups after. Um, exactly. Music. So I think that people really need to start, you know, giving you your flowers while you're here. Yeah, I'm giving them. It's so funny because every single interview has done it. Good. It is amazing. I really thank God. I know that this, again, I told you when we first started, there's some moments in your life that you know is a God moment and this is one. Yes. This is that time right now for me that everything is given back tenfold what was taken from me. Yes. God is just giving it back. Yeah, man. It, it just really. So before yeah. we now, I just have two more questions because you know what? I have a list here. So this is why I do I always write down things that I. Yes. To. And okay. you answered every one of them without me having to ask. So oh my God. <laughs> for making my job easier. Very easy. Me and my big mouth. Me and my big freaking mouth. Um, no, but it made my job so much easier. Um, but <laughs> one thing I wanted to know was what's the best piece of advice that you've gotten throughout these 30 years that sort mm -hmm. of carried you? And then Ooh. what is the legacy that you want to leave behind? Way, 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 way. Okay. Wait. Save that second question. Cause I'm going to forget it. Yes. But the first question was advice from, uh, we were probably 1991. We had just come out and we were at an award show in the Bay Area where we started, where Invoke started was in the Bay. Um, but this was a big award show and everybody was there. Everybody, Aretha Franklin, Shaka Khan, come on, Michael Jackson probably was not because it was a smaller award show. But Gladys Knight was backstage with us and we were just sitting there like little girls just listening to everything. Gladys freaking Knight. Right. You know, this is like, there's God and then there's Gladys. Seriously, that voice is still just so stellar. She's so... Mm -hmm. um, One of my favorites. She was sitting there with us and she said to us, she said, well, honey, girls, you have to be, you know, you might have to be, you might have to wear many hats. You're not just, you don't just be an artist. You got to be a businesswoman. You got to be, you may have to be a mother one day. You may have to be a wife. 
you know, and an artist, you got to wear all these hats and you got to, and she said, and Cindy said, well, you can't take your kids on the road. And she said, oh yeah. She said, I took my kids on the road from day one. And all the people backstage and the, and the stage hands and the roadies and the band, everybody helped raise my kids. And they got to see the world in a way that they wouldn't if they just stayed in one city, sleeping in the same bed every night is good. It has its pluses and its minuses. When you take them around the world, even here in the States, they get to see parts of, and parts of America that they would normally never see. Right. So it's just like she said, it's just like have, being a military kid, you know, and you get to travel around the country. And, it's like, and so she was right. When we were in Utah, I remember going through Utah on the tour bus. And I was just looking out of the window like, oh, my God, look how beautiful. And there were bison, freaking bison out there. Wow. Yes. I was like, they are huge. Oh, my God. I wanted the bus driver to just stop and let's look at this right now. You only see this in books or on TV. Mm -hmm. Bison. Like, come on. They were gigantic. Their shoulders were like, they look like couches. <laughs> Walking around. They were couches. They were huge. Oh, my God. You saw um, the world. I saw the world, but we, but I had an appreciation for America that I normally would not. I've never, I would never go to Wisconsin. Right. Why would I ever go to Montana or Denver? You know, New York, of course, because my dad, that's where we grew up at, but I would never go to Nebraska, you know, Idaho, um, Mississippi, you know, uh, yeah, we, ooh, it was gorgeous. We got to appreciate America and then go overseas. Oh my God, Japan. What a culture. Wow. What a freaking culture. A sea of black hair. There's not a lot of ethnicities there. So you're looking at all Japanese people when they cross the street, it's in droves. Thousands of them walking across the street coming at you like, oh my God. Oh, my, oh woo. They're looking <laughs> at us like, oh, oh. Yeah. Right. It was a culture shock, you know? Um, so I thank God for all of that. But she was right. She's like, so Cindy had her kids and her kids stayed home mostly with their father because he was able yeah. but, um, to do that. And he had his own career as well, but he stayed home. He was like a house mom. So he, when he wasn't playing baseball, Cindy was on the road. When, she was off, when he was playing baseball, she was off the road with the kids and they switched okay. it out like that. Oh, that's nice. So, um, and then your other question was, the legacy. What legacy do you want after everything is said and done? Yes. The legacy you want to leave behind. The legacy that I want to leave behind is Dawn was strong. Dawn was powerful. Yes, she was in groups. Of course, that's my legacy. And that, that's without saying. That's, just, that's a part of who I am. So it'll always be here. Thank you, God, for us being in those groups that our music will be an indelible part of society or part of the world forever, long after we're gone. Um, but I want people to know that she never backed down. She never gave up. She is strong. She is powerful. Um, she has tenacity and determination and drive. She's driven. She didn't say, because, you know, for a while I was like, oh my God, I'm getting too old for this. And what if it never happens? And oh, shut it up. Yep. I tell people all the time too, and this is part of my podcast that I will tell them, the minute you feel a negative thing in your head, like, oh, I'm never going to meet a man, or I'm never going to meet a woman, the girl of my dreams, or I'm never going to fall in love again. Oh, I'm too old for this. I can't, I can't, or whatever it is, I can't, whatever it is, you immediately shut that down because that's your subconscious talking. And we are the most powerful beings to ourselves. Nobody can tell you, you would never let somebody else on the outside tell you you can't do something. Exactly. Watch me. You know what I mean? Like, you're not going to tell me that I can't, but you're telling yourself that you can't. So, yeah, that is what I want people to, I want them to always know. You know what? She would always piss me off, but I can never say that Dawn Robinson stood down for anything. If you lay down for something, if you fall for, what is it? If you fall for something, you'll lay down for anything. What is it? If you don't stand up for something, you'll fall for anything. You'll fall for anything. Yes, thank you. Yeah, so I, would ne I was never that one. You can't step all over me. You can't. That, and so that's what I want my legacy to be, that Dawn stood up for herself. She's strong. She was a strong woman. Heck yeah. Powerful. Woo! I can't wait for you to, to put that all in writing because I just think mm. it's a powerful thing that you present to the world. Oh, thank you, Tiffany. That. And um, yes. your podcast, please do. Yes, I will. Thank you so I much. I'm your first listener. 
Mm. I, oh my God, thank you so much, Tiffany. That means the world, yeah. really does. I, honestly, I could legit talk to you all day. You are so <laughs> this is the most interesting interview I've had. You are oh so God. interesting because it's just like, <laughs> you give such great stories. Like, oh my God. That we wouldn't know. Like, you wouldn't think to ask, well, did you see bison in Idaho? But like, the fact <laughs> that you just like, <laughs> You, you give so much of you. It's pure. Oh, energy. my God. A, a giving energy. Um, yes. Such a calm, serene, peaceful. Um, nature. Love. That's my nature. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. I'm so glad that, that that's what's emanating. That's what people can see. I'm, gl I'm glad that that's um, transparent. You know what I mean? And that you can see that and feel that for me because that's who I've always been. And I, when I go back to the old interviews that we have, I'm still the same person. I'm just now more feisty. So when we did a, a show called Private Sessions in, I don't even know what year, oh, 2009. Um, the clips of those, of that particular thing, because it was in pieces. She had to do it in pieces. And we performed, we did some live performances and then they had uh, some interview, some um, celebrities that would say hello to us, like boys to men did um holly robinson said hello to terry because that's her best friend and so she had this little clip hey she was singing Aww. and then salt and pepper asked us a question and we were like oh my god the girls so they, they would show a little clip and i remember the lady the host of that show said dawn you left the group for a while and i was like yeah and she caught me off guard because i didn't know she was going to ask me and i was too scared to say in front of the girls cindy terry and maxine we were only making two pennies a record. I said, what I said was, I was upset because I didn't like the fact that we were not making what we deserve, the kind of money we deserved. Yeah. But I wasn't definite. I wasn't the dawn that I am today. So I didn't say, oh, we were making two pennies a record. And they kicked me out of the group for doing the same thing Terry did. Right. I didn't say that because I was too nervous. I just kind of like shut down. But you could tell there was hesitation in my voice. And but there are a couple of other interviews where I said, that one was one where I said we weren't making enough money. So it proves that we were making two pennies a record yeah. or that we weren't making as much as I thought. Um, there's another interview with Maxine and I doing Access Hollywood in 2013. And Cheryl, um, what's her name? Sean Robinson said, uh, well, who's in Vogue? And Maxine pointed at her and I. I was sitting above, a bit higher than her because the thing that they had her sitting on was not high enough and they couldn't find a chair that was matching. So we were both kind of like this. Like, okay. And I was sitting a little bit above Maxine and I was looking at her like down at her and I said, you know, um, I forgot how we got on the subject, what the question was from Sean, but she, whatever it was, I said, <clears throat> well, Cindy, Terry and Maxine. And then I was like, Dawn, Maxine's sitting right here. <laughs> but once I started, I couldn't finish. And I said, yeah. Cindy, Terry and Maxine, um, you know, they kicked me out of the group because I was saying that we weren't making enough. And I went on to say the same thing that I'm telling you guys right now. I said that then, and Maxine did not contest it. In other words, she didn't say, well, Dawn, that's not true. It's getting dark, isn't it? Right, right. It's getting super dark right now. I'm sorry, but yeah, um, she didn't, I'm gonna turn this way because I have a light in front of me and hopefully you can still, hold I can on. Still see you. Hold on. One more second, I'm done. I gotta go eat, I am starving. But yeah, um, she said, I was saying that um, we, we didn't make enough money and that we made two cents a record and all that stuff right there in front of Maxine. And she never said, well, Dawn, no, that's not quite how it happened. Or, well, yeah, we kicked her out, but we were gonna kick you, kick you, we kicked you out, but we were gonna kick her out too. There was nothing. She couldn't make up for it. There was nothing she could say. She was like, yeah, Dawn's, yeah, she's kind of right about, well, you spoke your truth and you I sure did. And you're continue to do that. Continue. Yeah, I will. You know. I can't help but be who I am, Tiffany. I will never be. I did that too much in the beginning, playing small to make them feel bigger or anybody feel bigger, even in Lucy Pearl, which we didn't talk about a lot. We can come back to that uh, another time. But, you know, you, you can't have a girl in the group and expect her not to get um, the attention. And right. that's what Raphael didn't like. I was getting all the attention. So he was being a little bitch. Okay, that's better. Yeah, and, I, and, and the only reason why I didn't ask you about that because I know that like a lot of people have talked about That's okay. Yeah, yeah, it's all right. I mean, I have talked about it a lot. Let's okay, the phone. you can still see me. So let's make a deal. Yes. We'll make a deal that when your book comes out, I'll mm -hmm. read the book. Hey, 
Okay. Now. Okay. And then we'll come back on and we'll discuss the book. And Use the phone. I'm so sorry. Okay. No, that's okay. It's going to pick up now. She's probably, my sister's going to leave a message for my mom. I know it. <laughs> I feel like we're friends now. We're like, oh, my mom's called. Well, hold on. Oh, exactly. My <laughs> <laughs> we are friends. We are. Yes. yes. And I heard you, though, okay. Tiffany. We're going to come back. We're going to talk about the book. We're going to see yes. how far you got with, with the skincare. We're going to talk about how far you got with the podcast. We're really going to focus on the book and um, starting, you know, starting from there, all of the great yes. things you're going you're gonna to be Please, doing. Please, I would lo lo yes. love nothing more than to come back because yes. you guys, it's, it's funny because you guys are seeing now when I'm starting out and then you're going to see how it ended up. And I love that. Yes. It's, it's like, it. uh, where are they now type of thing? You know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> so I love it. I'm so happy you joined us today. Um, you Thank you, God. Tiffany. You're super easy. Um, you're so personable. So sweet. Thank God. you. Thank you so much for coming to Sip and Dish. Yes, you're awesome. welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much, Dawn. I'll hit you up. And around. I'm proud of you. Like I told you, I'm very proud of you. So all good. All good. Thank you so much. Yes, it means everything. Um, I want to close out and then I'll, uh, stop the recording. And then I'll tell you what I was going to tell you Okay. before. So thank you so much, Dawn Robinson, for joining us today on Sip and Dish. Make thank sure you for having me, Tiffany. Check her out on Instagram. She's got so many amazing things coming and I know it's going to all be on Instagram. We can, we can find out everything that's going on at her Instagram. It is Dawn Robinson Diva with the blue Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And so it's the same thing on Facebook. Yes, on Facebook and Instagram. Yeah, exactly. Make sure you give her a follow because she's got so many yeah. amazing things coming up. Thank you so much, Dawn. You're welcome, Tiffany. Absolutely.